Hey folks, it's Frith Guy here, how you doing? I'm just racing up here to top up the sea drill again, and then we can run this one back down to the shop. We will get it loaded up fully with seed from the shop. I'll get five pallets and I'll load it completely up with that. I'll also get two pallets of fertilizer while we're there. Uh, I'm actually going to top this one up with fertilizer while we're here and we'll see if we can get any more in here. So we'll just unload that one and yep, we're getting three pallets of fertilizer to fill this one up. So if I just bring that one round and fold that one up a second, uh, we can get this tractor going here. Start you up. Get it going like that and I'm going to have to manually spin this one around a minute no it would help if I lifted it up there we go bring this one round and I'll get this one started down here then we can run back down we can run to the shop we can go and get that fertilizer and seed for the truck there and then we can also get the Brux chipper ready for the tractor we can run that one up to the top and we can start working up there very excited about this I'm curious to see just how much we're going to get in the way of wood chips. I suspect there is going to be a absolutely massive great big pile of wood chips and it's going to be most impressive to behold. At least that's what I'm hoping. That is, that is, that is my dear hope. I would like a huge great big pile up there. Um, we do, do then need to get them all loaded up and I was thinking that probably the fastest way of doing that would be to use the milling machine. Rather than trying to use anything like the um, the conveyor belts, they're rather the conveyor belts are rather slow. But if we use the milling machine, that one will grab it and it'll blow it up into a trailer, and it does so really, really quickly. So I'm quite sort of I'm thinking that it would be the optimal machine to use for this job. There is our concrete. We obviously we can't drive on it this week because it's going to crack if we try doing something like that, and and we are waiting for it to harden off a bit before we start building our sheds. My weekly question this week is. Would you like me to use these two sheds here, which are auto-loading bale storage? Basically, you bring the bales up to the front, and the guy that works with these sheds here, he basically, we, we'll bring on an extra employee, and he will run these sheds for us. We just dump the bales outside, and he puts them away neat and tidy inside the sheds, just like that. And then, when we need some bales, we go up there and we say, George, mate, can you just get me five or six bales of silage and two bales of hay? bring him out front, I'll pick him up on my way back through next time. He says, no worries boss, and he brings him out, he sticks him in front, and there you are, you can carry right on. So if you'd like me to use those, uh, well, would you like me to use them, or would you prefer that I didn't use them, were you thinking that they're a little bit too unrealistic? Um, either way, it's your vote, it's your game, head into the comment section down below, let us know which one you want and why, and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. Would you like me to use the automated bale sheds, or do you think it would be better if I was to avoid them altogether? Um, yes, I am racing up the wrong side of the road here, but I can see a long way in advance and there are no cars coming the other way. So. I'm confident with my move there to go out and pass a dozen different vehicles all at once. Um, and also, the, 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 the traffic rules do seem to be a little more relaxed here in Paraguay than they are in the US or the UK. Uh, I, I do like that about this place. It's, it's a lot more relaxed around here. So I want five pallets of seed, three pallets of fertilizer, and the Brooks Chipper. I'm going to buy the Brooks Chipper because I think it's actually a really, really cool piece of equipment, and I really like using it. So... Uh, I've also got that one there just in case we do want to use it. Uh, we're not going to use it today though. Now, where is that Brux chip? There it is, the Brux Un. This one has 55,000 litre capacity on board, which does make it a lot easier when you're busy harvesting stuff. But anyway, we want to get that $58,000. Okay, I didn't actually realize it was that much. I thought it was cheaper. So we'll lease this one rather than buy it. Um, hmm. I think we'll go for green so that it matches our John Deere. That's what we're going to do this time. So we will lease... Actually, no. If we got an orange, we're going for star... Is star -a that one or that one? Hang on a minute. Let's just go... Just just one second. Just a minute. Let's just take a look. Uh, star -a is... Well, that's an orange. That's, that's a yellowy up there. It's definitely an orange there, isn't it? I'm thinking that's the one that we want. There we go. Okay, we'll run back in here. I want to get the orange to match Astara. I know that I'm using it on the John Deere, but Stara is like the equipment of choice around here. So I'm thinking that we should go for Stara. Now, is that the orange for a Stara tractor? I really don't know. Let's just take a look at the next one. 
Or is it the slightly paler one like that? I actually think it is the orange. I think it is a more orangey color like that. I think this is the one. So we're going to lease it and we're going to take it in that color. If this is wrong, I'm going to be very disappointed in myself. Uh, anyway, we want to go back through here. And now I need palettes. So I need five of those. One and... Let me just get these a sec. Five pallets of seed, three pallets of fertilizer, and we have the Brux Chipper right here. This thing is awesome. I love this mod. I genuinely, genuinely love this mod. I think it's absolutely brilliant. It is a lifesaver as far as I'm concerned with dealing with trees, especially if, like me, you really, really don't like manually handling hundreds and hundreds of trees because of the sheer amount of time that it takes. It gets... It's all right with a few trees, but after a while it starts to get really, really tedious for me. I really don't enjoy it very much. So having something like that one there where you can just go along and turn all of the trees into wood chips rather than being forced to cut them all up and do stuff with them, it's just brilliant. It makes such a major difference to me. It really does. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely pleased that we've got that one and... Uh, will continue to use it. I used it in FS13. I used to use this one. I used it in FS15 and I now use it here in this one. And I really, really hope that someone is able to convert it yet again to FS19 when it comes out in a few months' time. I say a few months because it actually is. If you think about it, how long have we got before FS13 comes out? We are at the beginning of January. Now, the one thing I don't like about this is the graphics for the spout. So I always put the spout out pretty quick like that. So that it just stays above the tractor and you don't have it stuck right through the middle of the cab. Uh, because that, that's, that's the one bit that I'm not overly keen on. So if we just do that and bring this one up here like this there. It's going to actually just point towards the truck for a minute. But we don't re we're not going to worry about that. Um, anyway, it's January at the moment, and normally the next one comes out in the middle of October. So we are looking at, well, October is the 10th month. Middle of January, middle of October, we're looking at 10 months. We've got 10 months, ladies and gentlemen, before FS19 comes out. John Deere up in the field is literally about to run out of corn, so us racing up through here with the next lot is actually quite um, a good, it's, it's, it's a very, very good thing. I was trying to think of the word to, to mean a good thing. Fortunate, I, su I suppose fortunate might be the one that I'm looking for, but there was another word besides fortunate. I need to get one of those word a day calendars. And yes, I realize that Frith is an idiot. Um, it's not 10 months, it's nine months. It's only nine months, literally just nine months before we have the next farming simulator in our hands. I mean, yes, they may put it towards the end of the month, so, you know, technically it's nine and a half months, but yeah, nine months. Not ten months. Nope, that would put it in the middle of November. Last year it was in the middle of October. So I'm hoping it'll be the same. Nine months time, if it's not out yet, there is going to be an awful lot of hype going on about the new game that will be being released very, very soon. I'm so looking forward to this. I really am. I'm looking forward to the whole event, the hype and everything surrounding it and you know, the launch day and all of the rest of it. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I remember the launch day from FS17. I was so excited about it. I was a very small channel then. Um, I wasn't able to be involved in the early access to it. I, my channel wasn't um, sufficient to do that. But, I mean, maybe this time they will actually allow me to have some early access to the game if they're going to be doing that again. That would be absolutely brilliant. It means that I would be able to get it a bit beforehand. Um, but, yeah, the, the one thing I do remember most of all about Ever 17 when it came out, I started recording my very first impressions of it. Um, you know what would help if I actually line this thing up? Uh, I recorded my very first impressions of it, um, picking up the objects and moving them around and using the tip anywhere function and all kinds of things like that. It was absolutely awesome. I loved it. The big disappointment that I had was that I started playing the game. I, I started and I started recording. And for some reason, there is this issue with FS17 where some recording software doesn't record it properly. It actually records it way too dark. Um, I was delighted to find out later on that it wasn't just my recording software that I use um, because I've always been really pleased with my recording software. It doesn't lag the game 
like anything else I've ever seen. It's, it really, it's really well optimized. It does the job absolutely brilliantly. So I was quite delighted to find out that there wasn't actually any issues with my recording software. It's something to do with the game. They know about it, and they've not been able to do anything to fix it. They've said, just said, yeah, we know about it, but unfortunately we can't do anything about it. It's going to have to stay as it is. Um, still going? Yeah, it's still going. Um, and so I recorded the episode, and then I started editing and realized to my absolute horror that everything was really, really dark in the recording. I had to um, manually alter all of the settings in it, and so it looked really sort of weird. Um, it, it really genuinely looked quite bizarre. Uh, Goldcrest Valley Episode 1, if you're interested. If you want to see what that looks like, it's Goldcrest Valley Episode 1. I sorted it after that. I was able to um, like deal with the recordings um, and, and find another way to do it. And other people who've used different recording softwares have been able to do the same. Is something to do with recording software using the game to do the recording. So it takes the game settings and it but it's taking something like it's doing something like taking the base game settings or something like that and applying them to the game. Um which would be great and all, except that the base game I need to compare this to the the star a minute we just need to sit it alongside it and just see if it's the right color but yeah the base game settings are really really dark and then something happens afterwards where it makes it brighter and the it's not happening to the recording so basically you got your recording yes that is the same shade excellent so we got the right color on the rocks um you basically got your video recording ends up coming out really really dull and dark and you can't see anything in it and um, I like really dark. It's like the, the bright middle of the day. It seems like it's it's night time, and it's absolutely terrible. It's awful. I get the same thing if I try to take take a screenshot. Um, I record now because what I'm doing is rather than recording the game footage, I'm recording the desktop. Now everything has grown, so we do actually need to do fertilizing. We're going to leave that until everything is ready and ripe, I think. But we do need to start getting everything fertilized. We'll start that next week. Um, but yeah, the, the game, I'm not recording the game footage. I'm actually just recording, I've got a, a, it's on a desktop capture mode. And so by having it on desktop capture mode, I then don't have to worry about, oh, I need to change to there, and we need to unfold this one. So we do that like that, and then, uh, oh, great. There's one thing about this, why aren't you starting? It's not running. Oh, I know why. Um, if I come over to here and I put the PTO shaft on, that would probably work. That that would help it along. Um, it starts up, but for some reason with this tractor, it won't tilt forward. I noticed this in when I was recording Sandy Bay. This particular tractor won't allow it to tilt forward, so it won't drop down low to the ground. I'm pressing V here to lower it down, and it won't do it. Whereas the other ones, it does tilt forward when you're doing it. I don't know what it is about this tractor that's um, stopping it from doing this. I'm hoping that it will still actually collect the tree, though. We'll see a minute. See what it does. Yes. And it's loading it into the trailer as well. So everything is working. It's just not tilting it forward, which is a little bit of a nuisance. Um, but yes, the, the whole issue with the the recording software it wasn't it's not capturing this game properly but i'm not alone there are quite a few other people that have had this exact same issue and we're really really hoping that farming simulator are able to deal with this in the future i really do hope that they can deal with this in the future um and the next version of the game we don't have to do the desktop capture we can just capture it in game now looking at that i'm not actually able to pick the tree up because if i touch the tree in the middle it doesn't harvest it doesn't like it at all oh there we go now we got it um that is actually on board the wood chipper itself so i'm gonna have to run on for we're gonna find the spot that we're gonna tip all it it's actually gonna be up here near the road this is where we're gonna tip everything and the way that this will work is if i pick it up i need to just go forward a bit there we go it's got that one as well you're not getting very much on those small trees. I don't want to pick up another big tree because it's going to be too much and we're going to end up losing valuable wood chips. Um, so you're sort of using the capacity of this thing while it's um, running. And it does work really well. I'm going to bring these over here so that we're sort of more centralised for all of the trees and everything that we're going to be tipping out. Let's 
going to be the best place. Yeah. The thing about here is also plenty of space here as well. So we'll tip this one out here. So what you do is you lift that one up and you tip that one out. Uh, but yeah, I do remember that. Uh, I recorded this and I had this absolutely awesome episode. I was quite pleased with what I'd done, like my first results. Um, I mean, if I go back to those old episodes now and I look at them, I do kind of shake my head a little bit and think, what on earth was I doing? Um, but I think a lot of people do that. A, a lot of YouTubers will do that. They'll go and look at their old videos and they just look at them and like, oh, no, really, that, that was just, just bad and I, I really wish I'd done it differently. Um, so on and so forth but that's that's quite normal and natural that's just something that happens when you're doing YouTube videos um, so anyway I got this footage and I put it into the uh, editing program that I use which is Cyberlink Power Director and I couldn't believe it I was I was absolutely gutted I was so disappointed and then it took me a long time to sort of try and figure out I spent hours and hours trying to figure this out what, on, what am I going to do? What on earth am I going to do? I can't release videos like this on a regular basis. They are absolutely terrible. I'm not... I, ju I just can't do it. I've got to find another solution. It took me quite a long time. I did eventually manage to find this solution, which I now use, and I was really, really relieved about that. And then I found out afterwards that it's other people have been getting it. So there was... Um, I don't think it's all recording softwares, but there were quite a few of them that were having this exact same problem. And I can't tell you the relief I've felt, not only just being able to find a solution, but also finding out that I was not the only person that was having some serious issues. Because as soon as you start to have issues like that, you, you really start to sort of doubt yourself. You start thinking, well, is it me? Am I doing something wrong? Am I, am I sort of making these really stupid mistakes that... Um, an actual serious professional YouTuber wouldn't make. Um, do, do I, you know, what, what's going on here? I was, I was genuinely um, really starting to doubt myself with it. And then it, it all it all came together in the end and all was good. So I, I did have that sort of immense feeling of relief once it was finally over and I'd, I'd gotten everything sorted. So the same sort of thing, I'm hoping it's not going to happen, but at least this time I'll be prepared for it. I'll do, um, you know, I'm sort of expecting something, but I really don't want to do that. I'm expecting something to go wrong with the recording. So as as I'm kind of expecting it anyway, I'm I'm prepared. I, I can run some small tests, and I've learned a lot about how to do the recordings and how to check for issues and so on and so forth. So I shouldn't have any of those kinds of issues the next time around. At least I really hope that I don't. I really, really hope that I don't. Nonetheless, whatever does happen, I am really, really looking forward to being able to play the new Farming Simulator. Just nine months' time. It is going to be so much fun. I'm genuinely, genuinely looking forward to this. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's just one of those things. That you, every now and then, you sort of think about it and you get, like, this real surge of excitement. And what's it going to be like? What are we going to be able to do in this next one? and you know what options are we going to have and so on and so forth but then you can't so oh, i've overloaded there you can see up in the top right uh, top left hand corner it says wood chips it says 100 percent i've actually overloaded this one slightly now and i didn't mean to do that i wanted to just have it on uh partial a uh, partial load so we've got to be careful we don't take two great big trees because they do put a little bit too much into the wood chipper which means that we lose trees because you can use this one you can go around and you i could now go and do all of the rest of the trees on the map and um, I wouldn't have a load of wood chips everywhere but I don't really want to do that I don't want to waste wood chips the only thing I don't like about this that would definitely have tipped over by now see the, the center of gravity on that is over the, the wheels so yeah I'd, I'd have lost a, a lot of wood chips right there really want to do that too often but fortunately this game does give us a little bit of leeway when it comes to things like that so the only issue is I'm now completely stuck. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. I'm stuck. I've got this thing right up in the air and I can't move at all. <laughs> brilliant. That is absolutely fantastic. Oh, there we go. We're going to rescue it. We are. We're going we're gonna to save this one. Although I've got that 20,000 litres in there. It is not wanting to tip it out. Absolutely not wanting to tip it out. Okay, we can bring it forward. There we go. That's a lot better. We can bring it in through there. And I can tip it out like that. 
That's a much better way of doing it. I'm going to actually just lower that one round so that we've got at least a little nod towards realism. Blow all of those in there. Get those wood chips into the trailer and then we'll tip them out. Do th let's, let's do this properly, shall we? So we can tip that one up and then he's over like that with all of the wood chips. Excellent. Okay, so now we've got that one done. I've got to go back and I've got to reload the sea drill yet again. We'll just lower that one down there and... Let's go back through. We'll take up a couple more of these trees. Some of these are quite small ones. If you get the trees from the top, it does actually work all right. But this is the only tractor that I have found. Oh, you do have to be careful. I did, when I used to use this one in FS15, uh, it would actually glitch and cause problems. Um, I've never had it glitch and cause problems in this one. However, that doesn't mean to say that it's not going to happen. So never take my word for it. Always test these things yourself. No, it's not going to work that way. I've got one branch there that was moving separately. So let's grab that one a minute. Which is this one. Get you. Let me grab it. I could have it just then. I had I had the, the whole hand thing came up. There we go. Right. So I've got one here. If you grab it and you put the end. No, it's, it's not liking this, is it? Grab that end. There we go. You've got to get the end of the branch into the chipper. It won't work unless you've got the end of the branch in. But you can do it from, like, in the, the other end. You can, like, get the, e the the top end of the tree. And that will actually work. You've just got to be a little bit careful that you sort of get the end of the tree rather than the middle. Because otherwise it can get caught up on the chipper. And then you're not going to be able to do anything at all. Like, there. And I have had it. So it gets stuck on the end of it. And then you can't move it at all. We'll leave that tree there and we'll come back to that one in a minute. We'll go on up here and we'll see if we can grab another couple of them. There's, well, we got several just lined up along here. So, and there, see, it's, it's sort of shaking and trembling a little bit. And that's because I've actually got it stuck on the chipper this time. Yeah. See what I mean? You do have to be careful. So we're going <laughs> to... I'm not going to be able to do anything with this. This is absolutely completely stuck and it's dancing around. It's trying to draw into the chipper a little bit, I think. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the mechanic of this one works, but I'm actually starting to get a little bit concerned that it's going to... I'm going to switch that one off a second, just in case it wants to glitch the game out. Right, now that we're off, we can start the chipper back up again. We go from the front end. There we go, like that. Take Lift that one up properly and do it like that. I might be able to get this one as well. Because the chipper won't tip down with this model of tractor, I don't know why. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's not... Oh, there we go. That's most of it. Why is this tree coming up in pieces? None of the others have done that. But this one is... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing pieces of this tree. Object too heavy. All right. We're, we're going we're gonna to cut this one up. We're going to... Safety first, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do this right in front of the chipper with those... Um, yeah, we're literally about to climb into the chipper with that close. And that one as well. There we go. So we've got that one in at long last. But this is the kind of struggle that you can have with this thing. At least it's a lot easier than doing everything by hand. It could be considerably more difficult than it already is. And we can grab that one. As long as you get the end of the tree, it's, uh, or the end of any of the branches, it will work okay. Now, if I bring this one up here... I suspect that it's actually going to be too much wood chips. It's going to go to a full 100%. We'll see in a second. Yeah, 100%. That was too much. Uh, I got greedy once again. However, that's not the first time this happened, and it probably won't be the last. So we'll bring this back over to our little heap of wood chips that we got down over here. And I'm not actually going... To, I was thinking I really do need to get that other one restarted, but now I'm sort of thinking about it. Is that a brand, a, a log down there? You can see this thing lying... Yeah, it is. It's a log. We've got one log just lying here. There was So there's a couple of these that this has happened to now. It's kind of just picked up pieces of it rather than the whole thing. And it's left partial partial trees lying on the ground. And we definitely didn't do that with the chainsaw, did we? I don't think we did. Oh, no, wait. There was one, wasn't there? I think, I think there was one tree that we ended up doing that to because it, um, it didn't fall over or something. And I ended up cutting it a couple of times. Might have. It might have. I, I honestly can't remember now. Now, we are starting to lose some of the, the logs. So I'm actually hoping that I can bring this one forward and I can grab this next tree. Uh, no, it's not interested, is it? That's not going to have it at all. 
we might have to go around the front. I really don't know why this tractor won't allow you to tip down with the... Yeah, I've, I've got... Ah, uh, it's doing that thing with the bits again. I don't know why it's doing that. That's all right. We'll, we'll let that one go there a second. And I'm just going to grab this one little bit of branch here. Pick that up and dump that in. There we go. I like the white on the wood. I do like the colouring on the wood. Um, obviously, the wood chips is not reflecting that same colouring. But the actual white on the wood, uh, there's quite a few tropical woods that are very, very pale when you cut into them. And I do like that is actually accurately represented in this game. Um, it, does, it does actually mean something to me. It, it does make a genuine difference to me, the fact that we've got the, the very, very pale woods that you can get. Um, obviously, they're not all like that, but... It's nice to be able to. It's nice to be able to see this contrast to what we normally have. If I bring that one back up round there, I'm hoping that I can actually go in between those trees there and get this next bit on. And bring round there. Right. It's going to pick up the whole thing. Nope. It's doing bits again. If I picked up all. Nope. There's still. There's another piece there. Why is it doing this? It's because it won't tip down. That's why. I know, I know exactly why. I don't even need to ask. I know why it's doing this. It's just irritating because we don't have another tractor available at the moment that we can um, stick this one on front. We could use that. Uh, we could use the other John Deere. Uh, I'm wondering. Yeah, let's let's go and see how the other John Deere is doing a minute. Um, I've got that one. We're going to take you. Right, we're going we're gonna to swap around. We're going to have to finish this next week because we're not going to have time to finish everything today. So I need to... I think I need to lower you down, and then I can unhitch you, just like that. That should, that one can stay right there. This tractor, I'm hoping, will be able to take the seed drill, and we can take the other John Deere then, and run that one out to the, uh, up to where the Brux Chipper is, and we can swap the Brux Chipper over onto this other John Deere. That should allow us then to tilt the Brux Chipper forward so that it's facing down to the ground, which is what we need it to do. That is what we want it to do. And if it will tip forward like that, it then means that you can um, reach everything that's on the ground. And it should be a lot easier to pick up the remaining trees. We'll have to get the rest of them at the beginning of next week. It shouldn't take us very long. And then we can switch over to using the tree harvester and doing some of that. We'll just chop the trees wherever they happen to be. With the tree harvester, we can go back through and we can pick them up with a... Um, auto load log trailer stick them in a great big heap and then we can use the brux chipper finally to chip them all up we won't actually chip them up into a heap on the ground we're going to try and use the brux chipper to chip them into the big lorry trailers uh, the big truck trailers and see if we can do it like that it will then it's going to cut out a step i'm only doing it the way i'm doing it at the moment just because we kind of need to we don't have a trailer for a big trailer to follow us around with I suppose actually we could try doing that. I don't know how well that would work though. I don't think it works very well um, trying to use other other vehicles for it. I will take this one up. I'm just going to run this one up and reload it with C. We'll bring it down and set it going and then we can get that John Deere moving. I'll bring the star in there and set it going. Excellent. No problems at all with that one. So he can go on and do she actually. That's a she in there. Uh, she can carry on and do the seeding in there we can take this tractor up to the top we'll put the brux chipper in a trailer onto this one and we'll put this front weight that this one's got onto the other tractor the other tractor we can just move off to the side park it up and we should be able to work the brux chipper properly right i stuck the front weight there so if i just run over here and we'll unhitch this trailer right there and then we get the track started up We'll bring the Brooks chipper out of the undergrowth, so it's just going to be a little bit easier to hitch on. And I'll drop that one down there. So, come out, unhitch, and drop it down. We can leave it unfolded, it's not going to be any problem. So if I just swing this one over and I grab that front, wait a second, like that, and hitch you on, there we go. I can just move this one. All I'm going to do for now is I'm actually just going to park this one up over here and we're not going to worry about it. You know, it would help if I actually lifted the front weight up, though. So that one works. See, that one will raise up and down. But for some reason, this tractor here won't raise and lower the Brux chipper. Whereas this tractor should raise and lower the Brux chipper. We'll, we'll soon find out. I'm hoping that it will. I'm going to be bitterly disappointed if this one doesn't as well because that's all of the tractors that we've got. 
It will be a bit easier using this one, though. If I hitch that one on there, and I put the PTO on. Right, yeah, it's going to be easier using this one. It's got more horsepower. It's very slow to move this one around when he's actually running. So we start that one up. There we go. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to do that so that it will get right down low to the ground. See, even this one is slow moving compared to... Well, it's, it's just slow moving, not compared to anything. It's slow moving um, moving around with the Brux Chipper running. But it's a little bit quicker than the last tractor we are using because of the increased horsepower. Let's bring that one back around there. And it should be close enough to hitch on. Yes, it is. There we go. Right. Now we're talking. So we can move this one on round over here and lower it down. Oop, you know it would help if I actually had the right one selected. There we go. At last. And if I move this one over to this tree over here, it should just take the whole tree. Pick up the front of it. There we go. That's what we needed it to do. Right, so now that we have got this working nice and easy... Uh, we don't actually have that many trees left. It is going to take us a little while to run backwards and forwards and process these trees, but it shouldn't be all that long. A lot of the ones that are left are small trees as well, which should also speed things up a bit. If I come running through here, did that actually pick out the... Oh, no, I don't think it did. I was thinking it might have picked up the tree stump as well, but I don't think it did. I think that was just uh, a bit of an optical illusion going on. Grab that one and come through here... And get that one. <laughs> Look how fast it takes these down. It's absolutely brilliant. And I mean, there, I just missed the front. So long as you get the bottom of the tree, it's fine. It picks up the whole thing without any problem at all. Right, we got 44% on this one. So I can't take any big trees now. Just need to straighten that out a little bit. We come back there like that. And then we can swing in around a little bit sharper just to take the bottom of the small tree there. And. I think it does also act a little bit like a stump grinder as well. Although I'm not, I've never actually, I've never really tried this one as a stump grinder. I'd like to try the the um, the other one that we were talking about, the one from Black Sheep Modding. That's the stump grinder that I want to use this time. So I'm going to keep going. We're going for the small trees at the moment. These big ones, we can do two in a load, but we don't want to do any more than that. So if we stick with these small ones here and just mop a lot of those up for a minute, a 64%, a 70%. We're not going to do very many more of them. We've got quite a few bigger trees over here. And there is actually a tree there that I even forgot to cut down. Unless it's one that just didn't fall over. I suspect I forgot to cut it. So we'll do that in a second. 77. If I grab that tree... Actually, let's, let's go and see if this one cut down. The original one of these in FS13, what you could actually... And if it worked in FS15 as well. Um, it cut the tree as well. It, it did the whole action. It cut the tree and then it would chip it. And it was really good because you could just stick this one on the front without anything behind. Because you didn't have the tip anywhere function, you would literally just... Right, I want to get this... Why aren't you cutting? Yeah, uh, there. Um, you just present it to the tree and it would cut the tree and it would... Um, I think it did the stump as well. I think it did everything. It did the whole movement. Uh, you would cut the tree down and you would turn the tree into wood chips but it would also uh, grind the stump up as well and you'd, lo you'd lose the stump and it's just brilliant for that it was so quick so efficient you just go around the entire farm and you could take out every single tree on the farm if that's what you wanted to do and i gotta be honest i'm not a fan of trees in farming simulator i like seeing the trees around don't get me wrong but generally, around field, anywhere near a field, I absolutely don't like trees at all because of the amount of space that they take up and the amount of... I don't like the reduced visibility. You can't see anything. You've got the trees there, so they're blocking your view. You can't see anything. They're completely in the way of everything. And it's re it, Generally, they just really irritate me. So um, what I usually do in... you probably see this from the time lapse as well i like to go round and get rid of as many trees as i possibly can just because they irritate me so much i don't want a load of trees there they, they're completely in a way i'd rather just get rid of them all and then i can see what i'm doing i can actually drive along the sides of the road i can drive along a road and i can actually see what i'm doing if i'm driving along the road and it, it makes a huge difference it makes the game so much more enjoyable for me um my in real life um 
I have, see, I come from a family of farmers and we tend to view trees as if they're anywhere near your field, they're a bit of a nuisance. And so a lot of the farms that I've worked on and a lot of the farms that my family have owned over the years, the general practice has been if the tree is on the side of the field, you know, we, we do go along, we cut the trees down on the hedgerows and cut a lot of them down. Can, you, you know, literally, we'll spend months and months and months chopping trees down and getting rid of the trees that are in the hedgerows all the way along and having a shorter hedgerow. And, but then we have whole areas of woodland, you know, with prop, you know, an, an area dedicated to woodland. Plant areas up with trees and just masses and masses of trees all in one place. Having them around the edge of the field is nothing but a nuisance because they shed loads of leaves. They, um, the crop underneath, uh, it's, you, you can get branches and stuff going in which can damage your machinery. And not only that, because you've got this um, tree hanging over, the shade from the tree ends up stunting the growth of the crop that's underneath. So you know, very often for um, myself and the farms that I've worked on, that has been grass, but it's still stunting the growth of the grass underneath, and it does really make a significant difference. It's, it, it is an, a nuisance. It's a real pain because you've got to, to go around it, you've got to deal with it all, and yeah, you, you don't really want it. So... The general practice has been to cut down every single tree that is in a hedgerow and I mean some t some fields that you don't uh, cut you don't harvest very much you just have for grazing animals we'll leave them go we'll just let them grow right up as big as they can possibly grow and they look wonderful um, but around any field that we're regularly going to be mowing or anything like that all the trees come down cut the whole lot down and um, keep them short and go around with the hedge trim every year and keep them keep them nice and short clean tidy and you haven't got any problems and then your uh, crops that are in the field aren't going to be affected they're not going to be stunted you can cut them all and they're fine and then in the great the fields that are just grazing fields uh, you get a load of trees growing around them and every farm that i have worked on from family farms um through to uh, you know, people, you know, where I've worked for other people have all been the same. Any of them that have not gone round and cut down the trees in the hedgerows, but generally will keep most of the hedgerows trimmed anyway, but there is the odd tree that is just kind of growing in a hedge and they leave it and they're not too concerned about it. That I've never... I've, I'm just trying to think how many farms I've actually worked on. I think I've worked on about a dozen different farms in my time and... It's one thing that I've noticed that is quite sort of peculiar. The ones that go round and trim the hedges uh, but don't cut down any of the trees that are already existing in hedges don't have any dedicated woodland areas on their farms. But the ones that have gone round and actively will go round and cut down any trees that are growing next to any crop fields and try to get rid of all of the trees that are next to crop fields, all of those have large areas of woodland on the farm. And I worked for one guy, and he, he couldn't stand having trees everywhere. He absolutely hated having trees everywhere um, because they were just a nuisance. And he'd not long had the farm that he was on. He'd been there for, oh, I would guess, uh, just uh, three or four years when I started working for him. And all he did all winter for a couple of years was cut down trees. He was going around every single hedgerow, cutting down every single tree, except for the few trees that had preservation orders on them. Obviously you can't, in the UK, if a tree's got preservation order, it's illegal to cut it down. You can be fined a large amount of money. You can even have a prison sentence with it, although that's quite rare. Um, so anything with a uh, tree preservation order, he left. And then he went through, after cutting down all of these trees, uh, he, he literally he spent, probably three or four years cutting down trees hundreds and hundreds of trees all the way around all the fields that he wanted to be doing any harvesting in and he got rid of the whole lot because it was just so much easier it's much much easier to farm if you haven't got trees hanging over all of this land but while he was doing this he was also planting trees and he he planted them in stages and he planted he didn't just plant the same sort he didn't just stick a load of conifers in he had a huge different variety of trees and he planted them in sort of different groups and so on the optimal way that trees would grow without him having to do very much to maintain them um and he went through and he planted thousands and thousands of trees he took 10 acres of his land 
and just planted the entire area with trees. There were three of there was literally just three or four trees, big mature trees growing in the middle of them anyway, and they had preservation orders, and he decided that was where he was going to put his trees. So he chopped down every single tree on his farm, just about, and then went and planted thousands of trees right there on this 10 acre plot and grew it into a woodland. I seen it a few years ago and it looks impressive. So he's got all the rest of his farm has just got uh, shrubs across the farm and no grow no tall trees around any of the fields that he does crops in. Any of the fields that are used for grazing and exclusive because a lot of farmers will have fields where they only graze animals and they don't actually go and mow the field or do anything to it. All of those fields have got trees growing all the way around in hedgerows, some of which he actually planted an additional layer, a line of trees all the way around. And he's also got his 10 acre woodland that has now grown up and looks very, very impressive. Um, he did this because he doesn't like having trees growing around his fields. And I've worked on a lot of places like that. And I, so, yeah, he, I reckon that he probably had at the end of it more trees growing on his farm than he did before he started. And yet, a lot of people will say that what he did was really destructive because he cut down all the hedgerows. And yes, it was a bit destructive, but I think he compensated for that quite adequately with all the extra trees he planted. And trust me, he planted a lot. So I think that now he's actually got more trees on his farm than when he first started. I know that it is kind of subjective um, and it's, it's an argument that can go backwards and forwards over and over and over and over. And I've heard all kinds of arguments from both camps. I've worked for both types of farmers. Um, I've sort of, I, I, I've been heavily involved in the arguments of cutting down trees and which ones should be cut and which ones shouldn't for a very long time. So I've sort of heard all of the arguments. My personal belief now is if you're cutting down trees, fine. If that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. I prefer it if you were planting trees alongside that so that you weren't sort of just removing masses and masses of trees and not doing anything to replace them. I like to see the trees there. The trees are very, very beneficial to the environment. However, we also do need um, crops and we also need to be able to provide food for people. So if you've got a straight choice between chopping down some trees and being able, to, uh, you know, you've either got to leave the trees there or you've got to chop them down so that you can maximize food production. You, you kind of, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer, really. And, um, yeah, it can be a rather sensitive subject, but in my experience, the ones that tend to cut down the most trees are also the ones that tend to plant the most trees. So I, I always sort of look at it that way, that if you see a farmer out chopping down loads of trees, don't condemn him straight away. Go and find out what's going on because chances are he's actually planting far more than he's um, cutting down. Anyway, sorry, I, I got completely sidetracked there and like I normally do. So that's, that's my experience with chopping down trees. We've got a few more trees that we need to shred up this week. Um, we'll finish these off next week actually and then we can get the Ponzi Scorpion up here and we can have a good go with this one. We'll also, well, we get the corn going again at the beginning of next week, I think. We won't worry about that today. Uh, my weekly question, I have shown you several times now, we've got those automated bale sheds. I think they're actually really, really cool. I wouldn't mind trying one out. But what I want to know is, do you think that I should be running these automated bale sheds on this farm? Would you like me to add two of them into our farm and have them as permanent additions to our shed area that we're building down there? Once the concrete has gone hard, we can add those sheds in next week. And then we've got those two... Um, the automated ones in there. So we just bring the bales up, they get automatically stacked away into the shed, and then we want them. You can order the bales and they get placed out in front and you can pick them up. I think the idea is absolutely brilliant, but I want to know what you think. So it's your vote, it's your game. Head into the comment section down below, let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. Do you want these sheds? Yes or no? If you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.